All right, everyone, here we are. We're about to assemble the Proform Cadence, H-I-I-T-C-S. Let's get a close up there. That's what we're gonna assemble. It's the Smart Stepper plus Elliptical. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and assemble today. Thanks again for tuning in to Mastering Mayhem. Okay, so as you guys can see, we got everything out of the box. I put it on a moving uh, blanket here. I got all my parts there. The hardware, is, I always love this when uh, fitness equipment companies put the hardware here in this type of package. So you know when to use them and where to use them. This guy just takes you step by step and you know exactly what hardware pieces you need to use to get a certain step completed. These are gonna be the first two main pieces, the front a stabilizer there with the wheels and then this board here is just for shipping purposes so it's a size 14 socket to take this board off that's the first step so let's go ahead and do that okay so according to the instructions these two bolts that held the uh, stabilizer board in place are not needed for anything they don't fit any of the hardware description there so we'll just go ahead and toss these all right so the first step is to get this bar up there. Basically, I'll, basically, I'm going to flip the unit over to where this bar will sit right there in that little half pipe. And we're going to need two bolts there. And the two bolts that we're going to need for that is the M8 by 80 millimeter screws, two of them. It's right here as the first instructions right there. And that's how you get this stabilizer bar in place. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, this piece is pretty wobbly, so just make sure you hold on to it. Don't let it, you can let it free stand, but just pay attention and don't, don't let it move at all if you can. And these are Allen wrench bolts, so we're gonna use those. Uh, we're gonna get the Allen wrench bolt, which is provided here, but I'm probably gonna use an attachment and use my, uh, my M12 Milwaukee impact gun on the lowest setting. You don't wanna over tighten uh, the bolts at the beginning. Okay, on the stabilizer bar with the rolling ends here, the spinning ends, these are uh, also act as wheels, but right here it says this side against the frame. You may have to tilt it back a little bit just to get it started. And if you just kind of move it around a little bit with your hand, that should allow it to catch a few threads. This one's good, that one's good. There are no washers here that are mentioned, so it's just a straight uh, bolt, the M8 by 80 millimeter bolt. And like I said, just kind of tighten it down on the lower setting with your impact gun. And that's good to go. Let's go on to step two. So the next step is getting this back stabilizer on, this U-shaped piece right here. It's gonna go, we got a tip the main section over and then this guy will go into place in the instructions it says to not confuse these two these guys just keep the front of the back stabilizer onto the frame whereas these ones go through the back stabilizer into the frame so uh, let me see if i can give you guys a close-up and show you that also the shorter hex nut this is size 17 so make sure you have a size 17 socket and the longer ones are still size 14. Okay, so just kind of tip it down like that. Just here you can see these are the feet, so you know that's gonna be facing down. So that's how you're gonna place that right down here. Again, just, you can move it around a little bit if you have to, but just hand tighten it for now. Because it does have Loctite on the, the front of the bolts, keeps them securely in there. And then the longer ones go all the way through. And there's a pre-threaded uh, little section there that these bolts can attach to, as you can see. So again, just hand tighten them to get them in there. Make sure, make sure it's straight so the threading doesn't get stripped. Okay, remember, do not fully tighten yet so you can have a little play for the bottom bolts to make sure the bottom bolts get in straight. And remember the bottom bolts are size 17. Make sure it's nice and tight. 
And then I go back to the size 14 at top, tighten them down all the way, and you're good to go. The second part of step three is going to be these Allen wrench bolts that go in this hole right here, this side hole, so on both sides. So I already checked and made sure the holes are lined up, make sure they're lined up, and you're going to attach these bolts in there as the second part of step three. Okay, now part three of step three is installing this last boot or foot. Just additional stabilization is just gonna take two uh, Phillips head screws. It's gonna go right there in the middle. You'll see that there's two, there's two holes that are pre-drilled in that frame there. Let me see if I can show you. Basically it's these two holes here. You're just gonna put this foot here, I guess to you know create a gap so the uh, the heads, the hex heads of the bolts don't hit the ground. So you're gonna put that right there with two Phillips head screws. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, we're good to go. So that should be all the parts of step three. The frame, uh, the back piece of the frame, the front stabilizer, everything's good go, it's nice and solid. Make sure all your bolts are nice and tight and secure. And we're go ready to go on to step number four. All right, so the next step is attaching this upright with three of the size 13 bolts. These are size 13 heads, so you gotta have a 13, a size 13 socket but this is the upright, so this is what we're gonna attach. And then I'll show you how to connect the cables and make sure all that's connected properly. So let's go ahead and get this attached. Uh, also, it says to pre-tighten or hand-tighten the three bolts in all three holes first before you tighten it down. Again, just making sure they all have proper threading and you're not uh, trying to screw them in at an angle and stripping the thread. So I'm just hand tightening right now, putting them in all three holes. Okay, and then with this, you're gonna have these arms facing towards the back, just in case you're wondering. Also, so you see here, the bolts go on the side where it has this little notch sticking out of the upright frame. So that's the direction you want it to face. Then you have the connectors back here. They can only fit one way. Um, we're gonna leave that zip tie on just to keep the cable down. But the way these guys fit, you got a certain pattern here, right? It's like a male, female, and this has a clip. So you look on the female end, and that's where the clip goes, right? So you just line that up, you just have it like that, and it'll. you'll see that it lines up. See, you got the clicking point or the little tab there, and just kind of squeeze it together. See if I, like I was saying, see if I can do it. Oh, there it goes, one-handed. So that's it. I will cut that zip tie if I have to, or just kind of slide it in there, because you don't want to pinch the cables if you can avoid it. So we'll connect this portion up here once we get that monitor section up and installed there. All right, let us go on. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down. These are size 13, those three bolts. And that's the end. Basically, that's all the steps uh, for step four, or that's all the different things you need to do for step four. So let's go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, step five is taking two M416 screws and attaching the water bottle right there on the front of the frame. And it has pre-drilled holes, so you'll know exactly where to put it. So right there and up there are the two pre-drilled holes right on the front of the uh, upright frame there so anyway it's just right underneath the uh, warning sticker right there so we'll go ahead and test the water bottle water bottle holder with the m416 screws there's about 20 of these screws in the uh, hardware package so you'll know which ones they are okay that's good to go all right so next we're going to attach the shield covers on the left and right around the upright arm here and it's gonna cover the cable and so it hides all the cables. This is gonna require a total of five screws, one longer one and four short ones. Um, basically the M425 and four M416s. But, and then also you got tabs right here on the front of both of these shield covers, right? If you look at that, and then I'll show you how you use those to kind of guide it in place, but it's gonna wrap around it like that. 
Um, and this is going to take the longer screw and then the two bottom ones on both sides are going to take the shorter M416 screw. So let me go ahead and show you guys how this is attached. So that tab right there helps guide it in the front in place right there, nice and clean. So you get that tab underneath, it'll be nice and clean once the screws go in and hold it tight. Same on the, the right side here. Make sure you get that tab on the front part first. And you gotta line up all the tabs to give it a nice clean finish once you tighten it down. So yeah, make sure all the tabs line up and overlap each other when they need to overlap. And that's what it'll look like when you're done as far as just holding it in place. And like I said, it says to start with the longer screw up top. So just hold it together and we'll get the longer screw. There's one that's longer and that's the M, uh, I think it's the M425. Like I was saying, you make sure in there you verify that you don't pinch the cables or any of the wires. Okay, for that hole there, the exact one where my bit is pointing, you need a longer, thin bit to be able to get that screw in there because it's a pretty deep pocket in the plastic. Okay, just like that. Again, make sure they're all lined up. Squeeze it together, and now you can tighten it down. There you go. Now, once you make sure all these lines are uh, evenly spaced and parallel, you can get the four smaller screws in place. Just keep that longer bit on. Make sure there's no issues. There we go. And I always like to use my impact gun to the point that the clutch kicks in. And but so you don't over tighten it. You don't just keep holding the trigger. But once it, the clutch kicks in and it hits a few times, it's nice and tight. So that looks good. Let's go on to the next step. Okay. So the next step is to cover this uh, or to put on the lower shield cover, which is going to go right there. Two M416 screws again. They're just going to, it's just going to cover that lower section right there. I'll show you guys. And this is step. So this is step seven. There you go. Nice and secure. Step seven is done. We're going to go on to step eight. Okay, for step eight, we're gonna attach the uh, right and left pedal to the right and left pedal legs. So I'll show you guys how to do that. But basically just says to identify all four pieces and do the same thing uh, for both pedals to pedal leg uh, installation. Okay, so we have the right and left pedal legs. Uh, these have stickers on them to identify them. So don't worry about uh, having a hard time finding these. And then the right and left pedals are not marked, there's no sticker, um, but I think these are exactly the same. So you just attach these as you should. The way you attach this is you put it under and the, the, the little divot or the cutout right here where it slopes down, that's gonna be facing the front of that leg or what would be the back once you actually get it onto the machine. And then just tighten it down with your impact gun, or if you just have a screwdriver, that's fine too. All right, legs and uh, leg pedals are good to go. Let's go on to the next step. Okay, so for step, uh, step nine here, we're now gonna get the pedal legs on the crankshaft there. Came with the zip ties, so it says to remove these zip ties right now in order to get these onto the crankshaft there, or the crank. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's cut off these zip ties. And then like you can see here, this is the left one. So we're gonna put it on the opposite side there. Those zip ties were made to hold these sleeves in place, make sure they don't fall out, because apparently they can fall out during ship shipping and whatnot. So we'll put this on the left side. And uh, I probably won't show you because the wall it's too close to the unit, but I'll show you how to do the right, the right pedal and pedal leg. And then it's the same, it's gonna be the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so to get the pedal and pedal legs on the main body there on the crank leg or the crank bar, you gotta make sure you don't confuse the two caps. You want the bigger caps first 
to get on that crank and then the smaller caps will be on this bottom part you can't see it there but anyway start off with the bigger ones do not use the smaller ones for the first part there so you'll need the bigger the two bigger plastic caps the two allen wrench bolts and the two washers okay so the washers go on first right towards right on that bar just slide it all the way back then you put the cap over it pedal arm and the pedal we're going to rise, lift it up and put it on the crankshaft there or the crank bar and then what you do after that is this washer is going to sit right there on the bar then you put the plastic cap on top remember the larger plastic cap and then you screw it all down with this allen wrench bolt okay so i'll show you guys how i'm, how I'm going to do it there Make sure back here in the opening, you'll see two plastic sleeves or metal sleeves. And when they touch, it's done. Make sure the sleeve's still on here so there's no issues. And like I say, you put the big washer in place right there. You do it like that. And then there's a pre-threaded hole in the crank arm there. It's nice and secure. And it still has a nice smooth movement. So there you go. Make sure it's centered and everything's balanced out nice and parallel. Make sure the gap is evenly opened all the way around and this one is. So let's go ahead and do the left side and then we'll go on to the next step. Rubber ended mallet works quite well so you don't have to struggle with wiggling it and trying to force it in there. All right, so now we're going to install these these guys right here, the handlebar legs. And what you need to do is identify the outer and inner pivot covers. And this is the one that has this opening here and this little edge or flange or extended plastic piece here. That's going to be the inner one that's facing the main uh, body of the Proform equipment. And then the outer one is the one that's going to have a indentation where it's going to have an additional cover on it so just make sure you have that you got to identify the inner and the outer to put on the handlebar arm there okay and then it just takes four screws one two on here one two here and that'll keep the pivot covers on the handlebar arm so let's go ahead and do that Okay, remember if you don't have everything lined up properly it won't fit and things won't be flush here so you want to make sure everything's flush and parallel okay so the two pivot covers are on nice and secure okay the next step before we get those uh, handlebar arms on uh, we got to add a generous amount of grease to the axle here the axle and it goes through to hold the two uh, handlebar arms in place. So let's go ahead and do that. It says to use a plastic bag in order to get the grease on this bar without getting your hands all greasy. So you can just use a plastic bag that came uh, with the uh, equipment. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is the left arm that's gonna go right here. And we will be able to make sure you have the used part facing down toward the ground, which is gonna attach here, okay? And what you wanna do is get the bar, the greased up bar, and make sure you have the spacer that it goes inside here, right? You want that rubber spacer, there's two of them. You want that to go inside and push the bar through there. See, it came out the other side there. Now what we want to do is line it up so this guy will fit right in there. Okay, so it should all line up here. I'll show you guys in a moment. All right, so after you get the axle bar all the way through on the left side, 
make sure you see that it's uh, nice and greased up. And then what you do on this side is you're gonna put the washer along with the uh, bolt in place. It says just to hand tighten for now. So it just says the hand tighten for now. But that's how you put it in place there. Washer with a bolt, just hand tighten. And then the cap. After you do the final tightening down, you put the cap on over that just like that. So I'll go ahead and finish this, just tighten it. And then we'll go do the right arm where the bar has already come out and what you do there with the bar is you re-grease it make sure it's got plenty of grease on it and we'll put that right arm on now i already put this in place you don't have to that's the next step but i already got it in place where the leg meets the handlebar and then you can just kind of match you know line up the holes here when we get to it okay so i'm going to try to get you guys a better angle here <clears throat> for the right for the right handlebar so this is the right handlebar i already greased up the axle so it says to put this flex spacer here on the axle first slide that thing on there and then the next thing is the arm itself Should go on pretty smoothly there. And you can push down the pedal to let this guy come back. They kind of keep each other in place, but let's see if I can get this guy already. Yep, all right there in place. And then this again is where we put the big flat washer with the hex bolt. And so just a hand tighten for now. Do that on both sides, okay? Okay, so with these bolts, it's saying to tighten both of them on both the left and right side at the same time. So make sure you have like a ratcheting wrench or something where you can tighten, tighten them both at the same time. Okay, and then you put the caps, the cover caps on. Just like that, good to go. All right, step 15 is going to require these guys to be greased. Basically, these are the axles that are going to hold this corner piece together, basically the, the arm to the pedal leg. So you have to grease these up, and it's going to slide from the back side through. And then once you get it through, it's going to be a washer on this side, just like that, against this. And then you're going to have the plastic cover after that and then the screw to keep everything together so I'll show you guys how to do that so let's start off with greasing this one up you gotta move it forward to get it past the plastic housing there and you can just line up the holes prematurely we're gonna get some grease on this guy first there's also a hole here with a pre-threaded hole on the back or you're going to use a screw to keep that in place as well. And we'll get everything through first and then we'll get that screw in there. Just grease it up all over. It says to do, apply generous amounts. So we're just going to go all the way around make sure it's greased. You don't want to have any squeaking noises later or metal against metal. So just get that grease on all over. You're going to do this with both of these uh, smaller axles. So, next step, once you get that uh, smaller axle through, like I was saying, you get the big washer on, and then you get the plastic cover after that, and then the bolt. And just put it on just like that. Just hand tighten it for now. I'll give you guys a close up once, once it's all hand tight, or tightened down all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side, but it's the exact same thing. Uh, I'll go do it on the other side though, and then we'll go on to the next step. So let's give you a close up here on the left hand uh, pedal arm and handlebar. 
This is the back side where we're gonna uh, put the this um, axle, the small axle. And this is the screw I was talking about that keeps it in place there. So you just hand tighten things so it holds it in place when you want to shift the arm and leg or pedal bar. So I already greased up the small axle here. Let's see if I can get this on with one hand on the one hand on the camera and one here. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Let me put the camera down. But basically, you just kind of wiggle the corner area around until the holes line up exactly, and then you can push this uh, axle bar or post through. Okay. So once you line them up properly, it pushes through. And it comes out on this end here, at least uh, as far as it can. And just make sure it's greased up. And then, like I was saying, this screw goes right back here. It just goes right back there. Okay, just kind of hand tighten it for now. Just make sure it's in its place. You may have to adjust it a little bit to get it to line up so you can at least get a few threads tightened onto it, just like that. And then we're gonna put these three components in place on the other side. So I'm trying to do what takes two hands to do with one hand for you all. So now we're on the outside. And again, you put the washer against it and then the plastic cover on top and then the bolt goes through. So from the outside, you have the bolt first, then the plastic cover, then the washer. There you go. And you just put it in place. And for right now, it just says to hand tighten everything. So there you go. That's what it'll look like once you tighten it all down. Okay, so after you have uh, this bolt and the screw in the back just hand tightened and everything's greased up the instructions uh, the instructions say to go ahead and fully tighten these Okay, that looks good and that's what that screw is for to keep the axle from spinning inside this keeps it in this uh, this screw right here keeps it in place so we'll do that on the other one as well. The right side here. Difficult. It's uh, <clears throat> so it's pretty difficult doing it with one hand, but so just bear with me. Make sure that's secure. Okay, and get this tightened down back here as well. That's all done. Now we're gonna get the extension on these arms in place. All right, the next thing to get on is the upper right and left arms there, as well as getting these plastic covers on, which go on something like this. So put that on first before you get these uh, four bolts to bolt, bolt it down there. These are size 14 hex bolts. So let's go ahead and get these on. All right, get it facing as much forward as you can so you can get this guy in here. All right, you just line up the holes, drop the bolts in, Make sure you have those washers on there. Just kind of hand tighten. And then on the other end, they have pre-threaded pre, uh, pre plates. So you just push it through and just hand tighten for a moment. Get your, your impact gun, tighten them down. Tighten down securely. There you go. Just like that. And then repeat the step for the other upper arm there. 
the left arm, remember to get the cap on first, the plastic cover on first. Line it up here. Line up the holes. Get the bolt in the washer through. And it's pre-threaded on the other side. Hand tighten it. Both bolts. And then you can use your impact gun to securely tighten it down. See how this guy works. It's pretty smooth. Yep, yeah, I like it. Before we plug in the power actually, is to get the monitor connected to the two connections right there, if you can see them. And then the four screw holes to attach to the mount plate, which is right there. Okay, so let's see if I can get you guys a close up, or closer at least. There, hopefully that angle's better. But as you guys can see, the monitor base has a cutout. It'll fit right up on the plate there. Um, before, before we get the screw on there, let's, again, remember these, these sizes are different. So the smaller one matches up, the smaller male end matches up with the smaller female end. It can only go in one way. So if it doesn't go in easily, it's probably not the correct orientation let's see if i can hold it and do it at the same time here we go you'll hear it click too just like that and then the bigger one nice and smooth easy it, it clicks in no problem and then you push the excess cable inside the post there there's a big opening you don't want to pinch any of these wires that's for sure May have to finagle them a little bit, but there we go. Just like that. And then just line up the holes, pre-drilled holes there. Get your screws. I always like to hand tighten them first. Just to make sure all four of them line up. Just do a quick hand tightening. That'll hold it in place too. All right, so we're all done with that. I wanted to show you here, my customer didn't get the additional attachment here that comes and connects to these four connections that could be like a smartphone holder or iPad holder. So we just got these four screws in place to keep the monitor where it needs to be. So that's it. We're gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. I'm gonna have the customers plug it in. The power connection is right there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call them out and have them do it. All right guys, we finished it. It's all set and she is <laughs> testing it out. Great, great. Yeah, we got a thumbs up. She's love, she already got a few minutes in, getting her workout in, so. I'm back it's a wonderful machine. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's good, it's nice and quiet, very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah, and again, this is, just so you guys see, it is the Proform Cadence H-I-I-T-C-S. And according to my customer, it's sold out, right? When yes, you checked? it's sold out. Okay. Well, thanks again, you guys, for joining us. Uh, well, thanks for joining Mastery Mayhem. We really appreciate it. This is where we always try to find you guys the best tools, tech, DIYs, and deals. And until next time, I only hope- He's wonderful, he's nice. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. I always, I always love that feedback, so. <laughs> But we'll see you guys next time. All the best to you and yours.